Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is the Chief IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about our series in which what we do, we daily discuss some questions relating to your prelims 2020. So the name that we have kept for this series is let's solve some questions for prelims 2020. So as is clear from its name in this series what we do we daily discuss some questions that could be important from your prelims point of view. So today is video number 13 of this uh, this series so let's see what is the topic for today. So today we are we will be going to solve questions from environment and ecology part. So the first question is which of the following statements is are correct about ecological niche. First a niche is a unique functional role or place of a species in an ecosystem. Second, higher the number of niche in an ecosystem, more stable is the ecosystem. Third is, some species tend to have exact identical ecological niche in an ecosystem to maintain stability and continuity. So we have to choose that uh, which of uh, the above statements is are correct. Uh, friends, first statement is correct. The uh, niche is basically unique uh, uh, positional role and uh, uh, functional role uh, that a species uh, uh, acquire in a in a in an ecosystem. And uh, uh, if there is a higher the number of niches there in an ecosystem, then the most the stable the ecosystem is. So why uh, why is more stable? Because if they are higher, uh, if the uh, niches are higher, then certainly that means biodiversity would be uh, uh, higher in that particular ecosystem. So uh, an ecosystem which has uh, uh, which is biodiverse, uh, uh, it's is likely to be more stable. So that's why second statement is correct. But third is not correct uh, uh, because uh, this uh, uh, rarely uh, we can say rarely or not uh, uh, not two species could have identical ecological niches. In simple words, this is this is the truth. So third statement is wrong. So two, first two are correct. So the answer is A. So explanation is here. So you can check. Already I have told you that uh, ecological niche is the role and position a species has its has in its environment. So how it meets its needs for food, shelter, how it survives, and how it reproduces. So species niche includes all of its interactions with biotic as well as abiotic factors of the environment. So diverse niche in ecosystem ensures the stability and continuity. Uh, so if there is a particular ecosystem and if, uh, they, uh, if in it uh, there is high, bi uh, bi high biodiversity, then it is more likely that it will be stable than an ecosystem with low biodiversity. So it is basically ecologically st ecosystem stabilities and uh, systems, uh, ecosystem's ability to recover from a disaster. So consider if uh, a disaster wipes out a species, then if, uh, if the ecosystem has high biodiversity, then there are more chances that a new species will quickly move into the niche occupied by the old species and the ecosystem as a whole will recover quickly. Uh, because the conditions will be favorable uh, there but then if the ecosystem had low biodiversity so the recovery then might be slower because uh, uh, the uh, the interaction of the earlier species uh, and also the food chains and food webs that uh, that may be uh, there earlier uh, they may not be that much uh, there in uh, when once the this uh, ecological eco ecosystem starts restoring itself so obviously uh, uh, ecosystem with less biodiversity is less stable so statement 3 is incorrect because of According to the competition exclusion principle, no two species can occupy the same niche in the same environment for a long time as they become competition for each other in course of time. So the parameters of realized niche are re described by realized niche width of that species. Now let's move to the next question. Next is which of the following terms associated with ecosystem is are correctly matched? First, net primary product productivity of an ecosystem is rate of production of organic matter during uh, photosynthesis. Uh, second is catabolism is when bacterial and fungal enzymes degrade detritus into simpler uh, inorganic substances. Third is secondary productivity is defined as rate of formation of new organic matter by consumers. So we have to choose that which of the above statements uh, is are correct. Let me tell you friends that first is clearly wrong because uh, uh, this is not the net primary productivity. The, the, the definition here given it is of gross primary productivity. So when uh, when there is a, a production takes place in an ecosystem through photosynthesis, then the organic matter produced uh, is called gross primary productivity. And when we uh, minus the, uh, we can say uh, the loss of uh, uh, energy through, uh, through breathing, uh, then uh, through respiration, 
equation then uh, when we minus it through uh, uh, out of the total organic matter production then uh, we get net prime reproductivity so the first is wrong regarding the state state second is that uh, catabolism is when bacterial fun fungal enzymes degrade detritus detritus into simpler inorganic substances so yes that is correct because catabolism is uh, a kind of destructive metabolism in which uh, the uh, bacterial and fungal enzymes that are there they degrade the detritus, det detritus or, uh, or uh, dead organic matter into simpler or inorganic substances so that their recycling can happen uh, can take place in an ecosystem third is uh, secondary productivity uh, is also this is also correct it is the form rate of formation of new organic matter by consumers so the answer is two and three only uh, so the uh, answer should be c so here is the explanation so you can check it and uh, then catabolism about catabolism also i have told you and then secondary productivity is defined as the rate of formation of new organic matter by the consumers so uh, originally the organic matter uh, the primary organic matter is produced through process of photosynthesis because plants grow due to the process of photosynthesis and when they grow uh, they, they, uh, they grow only due to the formation of organic matter so uh, gross primary productivity takes place and when we we exclude from it uh, respiration loss, losses then uh, then we get net primary productivity and ultimately then plants uh, uh, are being eaten by the herbivores and herbivores are being eaten by the uh, by the carnivores so in this way energy transfer takes place but in the process suddenly organic matter is created but that organic matter which is created in the secondary processes is based upon uh, uh, the organic matter that has been consumed by for example herbivore uh, so if you take a take example of goat so then goat will uh, this convert this uh, uh, the, uh, his uh, his food into or fodder into uh, into organic matter and then uh, the goat might be eaten by uh, folks and then this this would result in transfer of organic matter from uh, goat to the folks and folks will create uh, uh, will produce uh, will lead to the for, will, will 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 form organic matter in it so that is basically that is called secondary productivity so now let's move to the next question next is which of the following role is are played by wildlife corridor in biodiversity uh, preser pre preservation first it allows an exchange of individuals between populations which may help prevent the negative effects of inbreeding and reduce genetic diversity second it may facilitate the reestablishment of populations that have been reduced or eliminated due to random events such as fires or disease so we have to choose that which of these uh, is correct let me tell you friends that both of these are correct so Uh, wildlife corridor is basically a link of wildlife habitat so generally native vegetation which joins two or more larger areas of similar wildlife habitat so corridors are critical for the maintenance of ecological processes including uh, allowing for the movement of animals and the continuation of viable populations statement 1 is also correct statement 2 is also correct so here you can see uh, i have included a photograph so this is the highway so if uh, for example uh, here is uh, the biodiversity and here is the ecosystem if they uh, the, these uh, certainly these two ecosystems will be quite similar uh, due to due to their uh, uh, due to their being located at similar uh, in similar uh, climatic conditions so obviously uh, the wildlife population that may exist here uh, may also coincide with the, the wildlife population here so if this is a kind of a wildlife corridor so wildlife corridors are not just that much small so they can be 100 or th thousands of kilometers so that depends upon uh, uh, pr uh, uh, each each corridor uh, so now let's move to the next question next is with respect to an ecosystem and its trophic levels which of the following statements is are correct first the energy always flow from higher to lower trophic level second there is always a high chance of having larger number of trophic levels for better movement of nutrients third food webs are more stable than food chain in an ecosystem in an ecosystem so we have to choose that which of these statements is are correct let me tell you friends that first is clearly incorrect because energy always from flow from lower trophic level to higher trophic level and uh, uh, second is also wrong because uh, uh, when the energy is transferred from one trophic level to uh, other trophic level a significant of amount of this energy is lost uh, in in the chemical processes or the metabolic activities so in that context uh, only small amount of uh, energy uh, gets transferred from one trophic level to uh, the second trophic level and then second to third trophic level so at max uh, uh, 
there could be sex trophic levels because uh, after that energy will not be that much that uh, further transfer of energy could take place so so that's why uh, that is uh, this trophic trophic levels are not uh, um, that much high but certainly uh, food webs are more stable than a food chain because uh, if we say that uh, that loss of energy takes place uh, from uh, when one energy gets transferred from one trophic level to another so certainly that's why it is said that if there is a food web, web that is a particular species is dependent upon number of uh, other uh, uh, other things then certainly the energy uh, his or her energy need will be will be completed and uh, he will uh, uh, then serve as an energy source for the uh, for the trophic level higher to it so but if in case uh, only uh, sm uh, small that uh, if only if only the one single food chain is there certainly the if if even a single uh, a, a single species from that uh, food chain gets eliminated then it will cause a, a significant damage so the answer is uh, c that is third only so here i have explained in detail you can check by pausing the video so i have explained each and every concept here uh, uh, in detail uh, so let's move on to the next question. Next is which of the following is our example of parasitic food chain? First, dead or organic matter, detrivores, predators, third, second, trees, fruit eating uh, birds, lice and bugs, bacteria and fungi, third, zebra, nematode, filamentous uh, bacteria. So we have to choose the correct answer. Let me tell you, friend, that the here uh, second, the second is correct and third is correct. First is not correct because it is a detritus food chain. So detritus food chain is that food chain. Uh, in which uh, uh, the and the, uh, the the transfer of energy starts with the, with the uh, dead organic matter being eaten by detrivores and then they, these detrivores that feed on the dead organic matter they are being eaten by the predators so that is detritus food chain so a parasitic food chain starts with uh, from with herbivores at the base so for example if tree is there then tree uh, tree will be eaten by the fruit eating birds and then on on birds there will there could be lice and bugs which which will which will get uh, energy from these uh, birds and then uh, these lice and bugs can further be decomposed by bacteria and fungi and, uh, when when they die so third is uh, also correct because zebra is a uh, herb herbivore so zebra will be dependent upon tree and zebra uh, after that then um, uh, after its death uh, uh, the nematode could uh, decompose it or nematode may reside over their body and then filamentous bacteria can further decompose it so that is a kind of parasitic food chain in which uh, uh, the the uh, the or organism depends on the other and uh, and uh, and the one that uh, that that uh, that meets the need of the uh, other uh, other species uh, that particular uh, uh, species is called uh, uh, is called host that uh, that hosts the uh, the the, uh, the organism that is higher in trophic level. So the answer is second and three, two and three only. So the answer is B. So I have explained to you in detail that parasitic food chain is uh, it starts from herbivore, but food energy passes from larger to smaller organism. So this is a unique feature because uh, most of the food chains they do start uh, with herbivore, but uh, uh, and uh, but then uh, other thing is that. Uh, uh, para in parasitic food chain, unique characteristic is that the organisms that may be at a uh, higher level of uh, uh, we can say trophic at, at higher trophic level, they mo may, uh, they may be uh, they may be smaller organisms. So, uh, but th there could be multiple of uh, these smaller organisms that could feed upon a single uh, single uh, individual of a population or, or or of a species. In that context, that is a uh, that is called parasitic food chain. So statement 2 and 3 are incorrect and state, uh, statement 2 and 3 are correct and statement 1 is incorrect. So this is about your discussion. So we have discussed 5 questions today. So if you have scored th uh, five, uh, 3 out of uh, 3 or 4 or 5 out of 5 then it is very good and if in case you haven't got uh, uh, where you haven't crossed that 3 mark or you have got 0 marks or 1 mark or 2 mark then it is very very much we can say good for you because at least you have learned something new in today's video. So this is our approach that is uh, don't count your score uh, we are basically here to inform you that uh, 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 what will what matters is your preparation is your st uh, uh, is, is step forward a uh, step in the forward direction certainly if you keep on counting scores and then start you must feel
feeling demotivated that uh, i have scored only this much number uh, uh, i have i have only this much uh, this much these much correct answers then why do worry about it at least uh, your prelims is six months away but that should not be a, a, a reason for complacency in you so the, this video is to solve the purpose that if you feel that uh, uh, you can improve upon these subjects and you don't know about them then you will start focusing upon the subject in the way the UPSC requires so that will be a kind of a positive uh, step in the in your preparation strategy in your preparation uh, the direction of your preparation so uh, regarding friends uh, uh, our series they, we have a geography series for uh, and also we have various other ncrt series in which we are covering your history ncrt is polity ncrt and then we have art and culture series and then we have uh, uh, ap, uh, indian polity series by m lakshmikant uh, uh, based upon m lakshmikant book and then we also have modern india series and daily current affairs series so if in case you are interested to join any of them you can you are more than welcome to check the description box so uh, we have different time uh, uh, time frameworks uh, for these uh, series for example we are covering geography and crts in 45 days and then we are covering indian polity by akmam lakshmikant in 60 days so uh, the, uh, you are daily given a target to read and uh, 10 questions are asked to you in the evening from that target and in this way you you uh, you prepare according to the target and you, in the evening you attempt the test so this uh, this ensures necessary uh, uh, we can say uh, a, a, a time bound uh, a time bound preparation strategy in which you pr pr prepare according to that uh, uh, according to a time framework so this ensures ca timely completion of your syllabus so in case you're interested then do ensure that you check the description box because this link and link to the various other series which he, which we have on our platform is provided in the description box and also you can uh, join our telegram channel where we have more than 15000 subscribers and you can also be part of uh, part of the subscribers because uh, on, on that telegram channel only we upload uh, the, the PDF so far discussions that we do on uh, on YouTube channel so in case you want to access the public public resources that we share with the uh, with the students of CSC uh, we can say uh, uh, that we share with the aspirants of CSC then uh, do ensure that you check the description box and join our telegram channel so that you can also get access to those public resources so this is all about friends today's discussion and if you have any doubts queries you can uh, ask in the comment box or uh, for the contact details and mail id is also given in the description box so you can check that and can um, uh, can message us personally if you have any queries so this is all about friends today's video do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you friends have a very nice day ahead